Hulu? Nah. Netflix? See ya. Right stuff? Yes. Now that's the stuff. And we're not talking about Hostess. What is up guys, this is Avenge here bringing you guys another Right Stuff Anime review and I gotta give a huge shout out to Right Stuff Anime for bringing this amazing classic over my way and so we're going to be talking about Turn A Gundam box art positives because boy oh boy do I got a lot to say about that because one of the things that I love about their cover art is how unique it is when I compare them to the previous Gundam series that I've reviewed because don't get me wrong the cover art of the previous anime series that I've watched were incredible clean beautiful but all they really did was slap on the background slap on some characters, slap on a Gundam, slap on a logo, and then they're done. But when it comes to the cover art for Turn of Gundam, there's more than just character art here. It actually tells us a story. It allows us to make predictions as to what we think could potentially happen. And just by looking at it, there's like this clash between old technology and new technology. I mean, why do we see airplanes that look like they came from the 1800s or even later than that? Why do we see a train in the bottom right hand corner? And there's some interesting foreshadowing here as well, because if you look at the two ladies on the cover, the lady that's more in the front and the lady that's farther in the back, they look very similar to one another and not only that why do they both have the same exact walking pose and that kind of gives you an idea of there could be some plot related to that and i will elaborate on that later on so very impressive stuff another thing that i'm going to do is show you pictures of what's inside um throughout the video so I'm going to share a few things about that. Now the CD disc covers in here, holy moly, it looks like they, they've been painted on. There's actual uh, pictures that look like paintings. And then on top of that, you have a nice, uh, you have some nice art inside the uh, disc cover. So that's really cool. And why don't I go ahead and read this? So it says, For 2,000 years, a separate race of humanity has lived on the moon, known as the moon race. Their technology is leaps and bounds beyond those that stayed behind on the Earth's surface. Now seeking to return to their original home, the moon race sent three teenagers, Loran, Keith, and Fran, down to Earth, on a reconnaissance mission to test the viability of its environment. After, send, after spending a year on Earth, Loran has become friends with Sochi and Kihel, daughters of the prestigious Heem family, and he looks forward to fully integrating into Earth society. But before Loran gets the chance to make his report, the Moon Race launch a surprise attack. Earth's primitive airplanes are no match for the superior power of the moon race's mobile suits. However, in the midst of the initial attack, Loran and Sochi uncover a long forgotten relic, a white mobile suit. As a moon race, Loran is quickly able to grasp the basics of piloting it, but by doing so, he inadvertently places himself in the middle of a war. And so, let the review begin. So let's talk about an interesting thing, but wait, before I do that, if you found yourself interested in this anime, then make sure to check out the description section below to get the right stuff for the right price. Now, let us begin. So first off, I want to talk about the MC, the main character known as Loran Seahack. And his appearance really surprised me. The main character is actually African American, or is it Indian? Or is it African? Or is he just the dark-skinned character? Is he black? Well, 
you know what I mean. It's not every day you see an MC that is more of a darker skin tone, which I find super awesome right off the bat. And so the thing that I want to want you guys to know is the fact that he still resembles the characteristics of your typical Gundam good guy. And that usually is a good thing because a lot of the main characters take on that similar role. So they're not deviating from that in regards to his personality. He's peace loving, skilled in combat, and he's also empathetic. And so why don't we go ahead and move on over to Sochi, 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 Sochi. I do not understand why tomboy characters are always so fun to watch in anime. I guess it's because of the fact that most tomboys are so blunt and they know how to have fun with the boys. And another thing that I want to bring up is she is the younger sister of Kihel. Um, she's born of royal blood, just like Kihel, but she wants to live a life of her own. She doesn't want to stay in the shadow of her sister. So that's a defining quality for her. And not only that, there's something that happens in the story that motivates her to continue to fight with the moon race. And another thing that I forgot to mention is Loran is actually from the moon race, but I did mention that in the earlier part of the review when reading the back, so you kind of got the gist of that. So the one thing that I do want to point out is the fact that she definitely says and does things that let you know, oh yeah, she loves Loran. Yeah, she loves that man. So why don't we keep moving? And so now we have Kihel. And Kihel is like your typical anime princess kind of girl, but she has huge ambitions. And when it comes to female anime characters like this, they usually follow the typical pattern. Very demanding, more formal, and not only that, she doesn't want to live a normal life. And um, that's kind of obvious. Usually if somebody is of royal blood, they, they want to be extraordinary, right? And she also has the characteristics of an amazing leader, and you'll learn more about that. And one thing that I want you guys to pay close attention to is look into her eyes. Now, just pay close attention to her appearance because that's going to play a huge part in the plot and I'll talk more about that shortly and let's talk about my boy Harry if you're familiar with the Gundam franchise and you just take a look at him you already know who he's supposed to resemble I mean look at the confident smirk on his face and those glasses that he's wearing he's definitely a freaking Char wannabe <laughs> he is a Char wannabe but I'm going to tell you right now he dresses like a dork, and those glasses look very dorky to me, but despite all of that, he is, he is really good. He's an awesome pilot. He's well aware of what's going on around him because he is the only character in this series that can differentiate the appearance he can differentiate between Diana and Kihel. He's the only character that can do it. So he knows what's going on around him. He's well aware. And then not only that, obviously, if you're going to be a Char wannabe, you have to be an extremely skilled pilot, right? So he has the skills to pay the bills. And then on top of that, he's very loyal to Diana. Yes, he is a moon race. Um, he's part of the moon race and he does whatever it takes to help Diana accomplish her goal. And why don't we go ahead and talk about Diana. Now look into her eyes. See how she looks very similar to Kihel. And she's, an in she's a huge part of the plot because she's actually the leader of the moon race. Now she desires peace. She wants to live peacefully with the people of earth and another thing i want to let you guys know is she wants to live a simple life 
And the fact that she wants to live a simple life actually drives the plot because there's going to be a point in the story where Diana and Kihel is both going to switch places. I don't want to reveal too much, but just keep that in mind. They're literally going to change roles. And of course, that's due to their their appearance. See how the cover actually kind of like draws you in? It definitely drew me in as I was watching this. So that was freaking awesome. And why don't we go ahead and talk about the Moon Race military and officials. Now the picture of that lady right there. I don't, I'm not mentioning her name because she is a very obnoxious character. I cannot stand her face. I cannot stand her voice. What is your name? It doesn't matter what your name is because I do not like you, girl. You are arrogant and you're ignorant and she is just, ugh disgusting can't stand this character i mean and one of the reasons why i brought this up is because of the simple fact that there are some people in the military some people that are moon race government officials that doesn't want to settle things peacefully they want to take over earth and they ignore diana's orders to um peacefully interact with the people of earth Diana's not the reason why there's conflict between the moon race and the people of Earth. It's the military officials and the government officials that were responsible for that. So I wanted to give you a little extra insight in regards to that. Diana wants world peace. She doesn't want war. Love, not war. And so now we got to get down to the dirty moments of this anime because... I've got to put the warning out there. This series is definitely a series that's not meant for the younger ones because there are some awkward moments in here. I mean, like the first thing that I want to talk about is the awkward nudity. Yes. We've got Loran. At the very beginning of the anime, you got Loran, Sochi, and Kihel in their birthday suits. Awkward. Yeah, it was very awkward. When I was watching that, I'm like, oh. and then later on in the series, as I was watching it, they showed another awkward, random nude scene of Sochi and some other girl letting it all hang out. And once again, oh. so I mean, yeah. Honestly, I felt like those uh, moments were not necessary. Nudity, they didn't, they did not need it. I honestly felt like they didn't, but it's there. I mean, it just cries out. FBI, open up! <laughs> FBI open up you know and another thing that I want to bring up is this was awkward especially for me being an african-american I mean why 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 is Loran trying to fit in with the earth people by working as a chauffeur really you guys couldn't give this man a better job than that it's just stereotypical to see someone of a darker skin, of a darker skin tone, working as a sh uh, freaking chauffeur, right? Since he's really good with his hands and he's like good with machines and and everything, why couldn't he be a mechanic or why couldn't he help fix the planes or something like that? And they give him a chauffeur job. I mean, <laughs> felt like they could have done a little better. But hey, don't worry. If you can look past this, there are some cool things to talk about. And the first thing that I want to talk about is the fact that the main character is empathetic. He is your typical Gundam, Gundam good guy, okay? They're not deviating from that, okay? So that's a really good thing. Um, another thing I want to bring to your attention is the characters are far more relatable. And the, I find that very important because think about it. 
if you can relate to the character, you can connect to them better, right? And let's look at Loran. The happiness that you see in his face as he's blending in with the people of Earth, knowing full well that he's not from Earth and he's of the moon race. And just watching those slice of life moments and just seeing him grow as an individual. And then look at Sochi. People that are um, uh, that are that are younger siblings of another, they can relate to her. They don't want to live in the shadow of their older sibling, especially if their older sibling seems to demonstrate feats that they couldn't even op imagine obtaining. So I mean, people could relate to that. I mean, we can even all relate to um, Kihel because think about it. Who doesn't want to live their best life, right? People want to live an extraordinary life, and that's the goal that a lot of people strive for. So I just find that very interesting. Um, another thing that I want to bring up is unique mobile suit models. It's freaking awesome. I mean, they, they don't follow the typical pattern of a Gundam design, so if you're looking for a fresh take on Gundam, this series is definitely for you. I mean, you've got Gundams that, I mean, not Gundams, but mobile suits that look like a T-Rex in a way, like big body, but stubby looking arms. And then you have moon race mobile suits that don't even look like they have arms. It took me a couple times to take a good look at those to see how they look because of how weird they are. And then look at the MC's Gundam. It has a freaking mustache. It reminds me of Dr. Robotnik, but to be honest with you, I mean, it looks more like freaking, uh, <laughs> it looks like Whitebeard from One Piece, to tell you the truth. <laughs> so, I mean, hey, if that floats your boat, you definitely want to check it out. And the last thing that I want to share with you that makes this series stand out from the rest is it focuses more on realism. I mean, if you look at the art, you look at the style, the way they dress, the fact that they use trains from like trains like we use now, especially in parts of the world that's still a bit like uh, dated in terms of technology. And then on top of that, they literally used airplanes to try to fight the fight off the moon race and inferior technology. It's it's more real, right? And then on top of that, you get to see different kinds of kind of scenery from the earth, like beautiful caverns, people living in cabins next to a lake. Um, what else? Did I say canyons? You know, like the Grand Canyon, you get scenes of that. You get scenes of people working together. Loran even used his mobile suit to assist in day-to-day um, -day activities, and you just see people working living in harmony and the interactions are just so realistic it's a, it's a different perspective to gundam so that's one of the major reasons why you should definitely check this you should definitely check this out i highly recommend it when it comes to that if you're looking for something that gives you a more realistic approach um not only that but there's also the mention of culture in it as well you know how the people survive how the people blend in and loran had to take all of that in in order to adapt since he never was born on earth anyway so it all comes together to create a very unique experience and i highly recommend that so with that said yo if you guys enjoyed this video and you find turn a gundam extremely interesting then make sure to check out the description section below to get the right stuff for the right price so remember if you want the right stuff then go to rightstuffanime.com thank you guys so much and i look forward to seeing you next time peace and god bless